dude. Hey, what's up? What you reading? The Bible. You're reading the Bible? Yeah. Dude, why are you reading the Bible? For class? No, I just... Okay, so you're just reading the Bible. You're just sitting here in a coffee shop in the 21st century using state-of-the-art technology to read ancient myths for no reason whatsoever. These little dramas made by Theus are always terrible for one simple reason. They always, always, always misportray the atheist. They're always grumpy, self-righteous Budinskis. In fact, the guy whose video this is has a banner on his Facebook page of God's Not Dead, the movie where Kevin Hercules Sorbo plays a guy who is only an atheist because he's angry at God. Oh, he really believes, but his life went pear-shaped and he's decided to blame the magical sky god. But I don't know any atheist who would see someone at a coffee shop, and I presume these guys are already acquainted, hear that they're reading the Bible and do much more than go, okay, possibly roll their eyes, make a disdainful facial expression, and then drop it. And they always make the atheist have shitty arguments, or be convinced by counterarguments that no atheist would ever accept. This is nothing more than mental masturbation for Christians, and it needs to be rationally dismissed. Let's do this. Greetings, fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. The historicity of the Bible and Jesus have been hotly debated topics, but rather than just present their arguments, a common theist technique is to ask lots of leading questions and to deflect or ignore any counterarguments, to answer questions with questions, keep the atheist on the defensive. And this is even worse, because the atheist part has been written by them, giving the answers they want to get. Tell me something. Are you one of those super religious people who thinks Jesus actually rose from the dead? Well, I do believe that. Do you also believe in the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, unicorns, Bigfoot, ever been abducted by aliens? And do you buy into all those other ancient myths about dying and rising gods invented by primitive nomadic tribes back in the Bronze Age? No. Okay, so what's the difference between Jesus rising from the dead and all those other fairy tales? Okay, so at least this bit is actually a common atheist argument. And it's a reasonable one. People have made magical claims throughout history, and with about as much evidence as there is for the biblical account. Let's see where he goes with this. Here's the difference. My belief in the resurrection of Jesus is rational. It's based on historical facts. I'm gonna have to disagree with you there. Jesus is as much legend as any of those other myths. For example, the notion of Santa Claus originated from the historical Saint Nicholas, a 4th century bishop and gift giver, and his legend grew into the Santa Claus we know today as a result of his history being merged with the English figure of Father Christmas, the Dutch and Belgian legend of Sinterklaas, who they considered the patron saint of children, and even merged with Germanic paganism and their version of Odin, while Yule and Christmas meshed with each other. We're starting with a bishop who gave to charity, and his legend grew and grew with the merging of other legends and with each retelling, until we got the Santa Claus we know today. If the same hasn't happened with regard to Jesus, frankly, I'll be shocked. <laughs> facts? What facts? Well, first, Jesus died by crucifixion. Whoa, hold on. We don't even know if Jesus existed. Why should I believe your facts? Well, because the five facts I'm going to give you are backed by so much historical evidence that most professional critical scholars who study the subject accept them as true. That includes skeptical atheist scholars. Okay, so Jesus was a guy who actually existed and then got himself killed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you know any atheist who would just go, Okay, he was a real guy. Dude boy caved awfully fast. But that's what happens when his part is written by Christians. That's the first fact. Second, his disciples were convinced that he rose from the dead and appeared to them. Oh, his disciples were convinced, were they? The problem is that most scholars agree that the gospel accounts weren't actually written by the disciples, but were actually written much later, even generations later, and not by an eyewitness. The reliability of the testimony of the disciples is in serious doubt. Whether they even said what is attributed to them is in doubt, and their legends may have grown in the retelling just as Santa Claus has. Couple that with several apparent contradictions in the gospel accounts, never mind throughout the entire Bible, and you'll forgive us if the biblical account is not particularly trustworthy. Third, Paul, a sworn enemy of the early Christians, suddenly became a Christian. And? I can name more than a few Christians, rabid and screaming followers of God, who suddenly became atheists. We have people who've switched political parties and people who've decided Superman is better than Batman, 
and vice versa, from where before they adamantly disagreed. Myself, I've developed a taste for certain songs and bands that I used to positively loathe. So who cares if Zippy the Wondermutt suddenly became a Christian? That proves nothing about what happened. It just proves what he decided. And he may not have done so for rational reasons. And this assumes the historicity of his account in the first place, which we've already seen is in serious doubt. Fourth, Jesus' skeptical brother James also became a Christian. Oh, pfft. And fifth, the tomb where they put Jesus' body was empty. Here's the problem. According to Matthew 27, 59-66, it says that a whole day passed between Joseph putting that stone across the door to the tomb and the guards being asked to stand watch. So there was plenty of opportunity to steal away the body. Now, Matthew 28, 2-4 claims that while the women were present, an angel came down and killed the guards, then rolled back the stone. But Luke 24, 2 says they came and found the stone already rolled away and says nothing about the guards, who probably would have noticed if a tomb's door started moving about. In fact, Luke doesn't seem to mention guards at all. So really, which seems more likely, that someone totally punked the Romans and the disciples, or perhaps the Romans punked the disciples, or perhaps there were no Roman guards at all, or some magical shit happened and dead people rose from the grave, possibly with an assist by an angel who kills soldiers. And those are well-established historical facts. Right, but you can't just leave it there. These facts demand an explanation. Otherwise, you've got a big hole in human history. Okay, here's an explanation. They all lied. It was a conspiracy, the most monumental prank ever perpetrated. His followers stole his corpse from the tomb and then started telling everybody he was alive. That's the conspiracy theory. The problem is it doesn't explain the facts. How do a few spineless fishermen, cringing in fear for their lives, subdue a bunch of well-armed, professional Roman guards, roll away a two-ton stone, steal a body, then hide it from a city swarming with people trying to find it? Well, we've already seen how the body could have been taken without it being noticed. As to hiding a body, there's quite a few ways. They could burn it. They could chop it or grind it up. They could sink it or throw it down a well. Hell, they could eat it. They're going to be doing that anyway when they're taking communion. Why not start now? And why would they do it? The disciples had absolutely nothing to gain by lying about Jesus' resurrection. In fact, they were persecuted. And we have good historical evidence that five of them were martyred because of their claim that Jesus rose from the dead. Apparently not a single one of them ever recanted. People don't willingly die for something they know isn't true. Maybe they made the claim hoping it would recruit people and it backfired on them. Maybe they just didn't want to admit that Jesus was a mere mortal. Or maybe, as I said, they'd been pranked by someone before the guards arrived, if they arrived at all, which is in doubt. And, perplexing as it may be, it seems to be part of human nature to like martyrdom, to be proud of using one's own pain to prove loyalty and dedication. So their being martyred doesn't prove anything but that they're only human. All right, another theory. The disciples thought they saw Jesus alive after he died, but it was just wishful thinking. They were stressed and just kind of hallucinated. The hallucination theory also lacks explanatory power. 500 witnesses saw Jesus at the same time, and the disciples touched him. Psychologists have shown that hallucinations don't work like that, nor does this explain the empty tomb. Again, generations between the story and the writing of it, not written by an eyewitness, yada, yada, yada. There's absolutely no reason to trust this account in the Bible. But, of course, our Christian authored atheist friend isn't going to bring up that part. Okay, look, maybe there's some other explanation, but the bottom line is dead people stay dead. Rising from the dead would be a supernatural event, a miracle, and science has proven that miracles don't happen. No, it hasn't. Science has never found a miracle, however, and that significantly cast doubt on the probability of the supernatural existing. But, of course, this is what a Christian thinks atheist arguments are actually like, apparently. And it's not. Oh, really? When did that happen? I don't know. I just kind of heard it somewhere. Oh, pfft. Science has not disproven miracles. In fact, that would be impossible. Why? Science deals exclusively with natural phenomena, physical matter and material processes, right? Uh, yeah. But a miracle, by definition, is not a natural phenomenon. It's supernatural. So? So a supernatural event would lie outside the boundaries of science. It's logically impossible for science to throw out any hypothesis that lies outside its boundaries. Unless a miracle affected the physical world, you'd never know it was there. That would mean it's not the supernatural, 
It's the secret identity natural. <laughs> and if it does affect the physical world, then it is definitely an area for science. And who's to say that what we call the supernatural isn't actually quite natural for an alternate dimension that happens to cross our own or can be made to? For that matter, what was long thought to be supernatural has since been found to have perfectly natural explanations and causes, like diseases, or supernatural remedies, like their cures, were either found to be natural or to not work at all. Had science not studied the supernatural, we would never have had medicine, among many other things. Why have I never heard this stuff before? Well, you probably would have, if you weren't a fictional atheist written by Christians. And you'd probably have heard the counters to it as well, assuming you hadn't thought of them independently. A lot of atheists tend to be smart like that. I don't know. Maybe because it's scary? Scary? That doesn't explain why he's never heard it before. You godbotherers were apparently lax in your evangelizing. Yeah. As long as Jesus rising from the dead is just a fairy tale, like Santa Claus and unicorns, it doesn't threaten my little world. But if it's a fact, if he actually did rise from the dead, that's huge. It's a total game changer. And if Jesus turns out to be fake, it's also a total game changer, whether another religion is true or if none of them are. But you're probably not prepared to consider that, much less see that it threatens your own little world. Now are ya? And that's why it's so hard to think about it objectively. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Big one. Well, imagine that. He gave the atheist food for thought. Probably converted him by next month, I'll bet. Sure. Right. Note to theist. Don't do these little plays. They pretty much never match reality. You use the arguments that would convince you, then portray the atheist as ultimately agreeing with you and to fuckery with what would actually happen. You'd do better to just present your arguments and defend or amend them in the face of criticism. Trying to turn it into fiction doesn't work. It makes you look silly and pisses people off. Seriously, just stop. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please, think. Even YouTubers need Ferraris. Please donate on Patreon. Oh.